Hi, I'm Ryan O, and this is my last lecture video. Chapter 1, An Injured Lion Out of all other animals, I'll choose a scorpion. Why, you ask? Although the scorpion is seen as scary and dangerous, its spiritual representation is actually reborn after death, which means to come back from failure. If you know me, I'm a person that never succeeds at something firsthand. It will take me multiple attempts to be able to execute things my way. Through times and hard work, I will always reach my goals. I used to think that I was never good enough to do anything, but that just meant for me to put in more hard work. Chapter 4 The Parent Lottery the First look at me and you think that my parents forced me to study 24-7, do piano of practice, and get a 5.0 GPA. Actually, my parents care that I'm a person that is well-rounded and happy. At the same time, though, my parents never showed that they loved me directly, but they did do little things when it came to just saying good job or a pat on the back. To you, it might seem weird, but if you know my parents, those little ways of appreciation mean a lot to me. I appreciate my parents so much because they worked so hard and gotten through so much being immigrants and moving to America. I'm so lucky to have the parents I have now. Chapter 7 I never made it in the NFL. My whole life, my dad has encouraged me to do as many sports as I can, but I can definitely say that I have a love for tennis and dragon boat racing. The fact that I get to spend time playing the sports I love with the people I love gives me all the more reasons to keep on playing. The great thing about getting to spend time with teammates is that I learned so much from them. But one thing I've always taken into consideration is what one of my dragon boat captains said was to compare yourself to people that you know are better than you so that you strive to make yourself better and to keep on growing. I've always kept that saying. Chapter 11, The Happiest Place on Earth. The happiest place on earth for me is in my room alone with my headphones on. The reason why is because when I'm just there alone listening to music, I imagine myself in past places I've been to. To simplify, my happy place is inside my head where I store all my past experiences I've made. My happy place has helped me with situations at times in my life by bringing me back to old times, I've dealt with similar situations. I love my happy place because I can go whenever I'm in need or just when I'm tired of life. Chapter 21, J. I would like to say that the one role model in my life is my cousin Tommy. I know it's not my mom or dad, but my cousin Tommy has always been there for me and the person I can rely on. No matter what, he makes everything to a lesson, which is something I hate and love at the same time. When I was little, he always gave me a hard time, but now I knew he did that because he wanted me to grow up. If anything to happen, I know Tommy would be there for me and help me. Chapter 24, A Recovering Jerk. I can definitely say that I was a jerk in my past. When I was in elementary school, it was always easy for me to make friends, but there'd be times when I would say something or do something that I didn't mean to be negative. As a kid, I never understood people or was able to read the environment in situations, which made me do things that offend people. But over time, I've matured, yet I still can't say I don't totally do the same things still. Chapter 28, Dream Big. Because I had a lack of performance in school, my parents always had low expectations of me. But even though they think little of me, I still have learned one thing from my journey of life, which is to go for things bigger than you, no matter what. Most people would see things as too difficult or I'm not good enough for that, without even trying it. Well, I'd be the person who would go for it because in the end, if it doesn't hurt, what's the point of not trying? I'm a person that is outgoing and loves to try new things. Trying new things have made me more experienced and prepared for more unexpected conflicts. Chapter 53, Never Give Up. I have learned from my past experiences that success is only something you have accomplished when you reach your goal and that you're satisfied. And the only times when I feel successful after doing anything is only when I work hard in the process, which is getting harder for me because as I'm growing up, my expectations of hard work for myself is increasing. Even though I say this though, things are extremely hard for me, and there are times I just want them to be over with. No matter what though, giving up should never be something you should resort to. Chapter 56, make a decision, Tigger or Yor. 
I would definitely say that I'm a Tigger, because no matter what, I'm a very optimistic person. I would always try to see the best in everything. The fact that I always love making jokes, screwing around with my friends, and just having a good time. Whenever I'm usually very optimistic is when I'm in the club, where I have so many friends that are like families with me. Being optimistic has helped me out so much during my journey, because optimism is a very powerful thing. Even when you're down, having optimism will be the one thing to carry you through with those hard times. <laughs> Chapter 61. The dreams will come to you. The title is totally correct. Dreams won't just come to you. It takes commitment and constant reminders that you're going to fail a lot. Dreams even though they are amazing. The process of hitting them is very brutal. You'll hit a lot of walls, and there will be times when you have to make a lot of sacrifices. I'm constantly working on my own cooking skills to someday be able to go to culinary school. If you think about it, what you do now will affect you in the future, when it comes to school or the dumb decisions you decide to make. You should always make sure that you don't do anything stupid. If you have any dreams, you should learn to integrate things into your daily schedule to help you reach it. In the end though, we, are, we all have dreams in mind, but it's up to us to decide what we're going to make of that dream. Finally, after this whole video, I have three marks of advice I have for my own philosophy. Number one, if you have a dream, don't leave it to the side and do nothing with it. Do anything you can to spark that interest. I mean, how are you going to start a fire with wood, but no matches? But the fire, there's wind, the people that would discourage you and make you want to quit. But the longer that fire has gotten to burn, the bigger it gets and all of a sudden, that wind doesn't seem that bad anymore. In fact, it will help that fire just get bigger and bigger. Number 2. You need to be honest with yourself. Most people usually cover everything with pure laughter, but that laughter will soon start to blind you. So you need to just stop, look at yourself, and just ask, are you really going to be alright? And finally, number 3. Have people talk to you. In your life, you're going to be mad, sad, confused. And you're probably going to act the same way as you usually do, while those emotions are just bottled up, ready to explode. Having someone to talk to is something that will help you release all those negative emotions. Thanks for watching. Peace.